Hey everyone, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.2 demo for the piece I call Hellboy. Because it's of Hellboy, and I'm tired of coming up with names for things. So, this is an old drawing that I did a long time ago. Here's the sketch right there, you see it pop on screen. Um, this was done with ballpoint pen, pencil, sharpie, while ago, um, and I was, uh, somebody actually recently, I'm sorry I don't remember your username, somebody recently found it in my Instagram uh, account somewhere and commented and they said they liked it and I was, and it reminded me of it and I was like, hey, you know, I should do something with it. So that's what I did. I decided I should color it up. Um, and I had some techniques that I wanted to play with. I sort of, I think that one of the important things to do in art is as you build techniques, you try to uh, overlap them or you do your best to make sure at least that they don't get siloed. Like this is my technique for this and I only use it for this. And so what I wanted to do was nothing, nothing like special, nothing that other artists don't do, but just something I don't really ever do was I wanted to do something that was just a series of multiply layers for shadows. Um, I've done multiply layers for shadows, of course, and on my channel here you can see me doing it. Um, across the board, but I just sort of wanted to play with, at least for myself, doing it a little bit differently. So let's start talking about it. Um, here, everything is flatted like normal, and I'm doing my select paint, select clear method just like I normally do. Uh, so if you want to see that, it's linked down below, and that's how I went through coloring all of this. Um, what I then did was I, I treated these shadows as the sort of main form shadows, um, and there are some cast shadows as well, just sort of what he would cast on himself. So his ear onto his neck or his chin and neck onto the coat like that type of a thing uh, and I was going through all the layers applying these uh, this shadow by the way is a warm shadow because my highlight is going to be cool um, so this is a uh, like a reddish a light gray reddish tannish color um, set to multiply and so I'm going through all of these layers and I am using mostly uh, a soft brush like a big fat airbrush in fact it's almost entirely that and then uh, I'm just occasionally using selections or at the very least uh, painting something in a little bit more hard and then using a soft eraser to erase away and so what you see here is me doing that on the base shapes for everything and moving through uh, one thing to note because it's a little hard to see is sometimes it's hard to tell where his face ends and his neck begins since it's all red or like for instance where his one horn ends and then uh, his head begins uh, so I do at times shift the colors around a little bit just so I can see what I'm working with which you'll see that coming up in a second um, so here I am just moving through all of these layers uh, painting uh, using this one multiply layer now my goal is then to add an additional multiply layer that is to put more not 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 exclusively um, ambient occlusion shadows but just uh, mostly ambient occlusion, occlusion shadows and then I'll occasionally find opportunities to maybe just reinforce the shadow that's already there. So it's, a, it's mo uh, mostly separate but uh, occasionally there's some overlapping purpose uh, through here. Right now though we're still on that main core shadow uh, sorry, not core, not core shadow like core shadow like the term core shadow just the, the main shadow that we're going to be working with. And you'll occasionally, like I'm doing right here on the hair, you'll see me create a new layer that I'm using uh, as a multiply, and then I'll merge it back into the other layer. Um, and that's just so that I can get certain amounts of separation and not worry too much about overlapping. It's a trick I use in, in other methods as well, but frequently when you see me do one single shadow layer, I don't build different layers and then merge them together. I did do that occasionally here so that I can make sure I was getting the right separation from time to time. So what you're seeing with the way I'm doing the hair here is I'm trying to lay in the shadows in the order where the most overlapping objects are covered last. So I'm painting a little bit of the shadow for the hair that's going to fall behind and then I will paint and then I will erase away what I don't need and then I'll paint like the next layer up. Um, the physical layer, not the not the procreate layer. So the layers of hair as if he were a real person. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do there to get the right layering of depth uh, that you see. Uh, now here we're just doing the shadows on the mouth. Again, this is the select paint, select clear method. So everything ultimately will be one shadow layer on top of everything else. 
See right there, we just cleared the coat. That, that front part of the coat is on the topmost layer, as far as the flats are concerned. And then we just selected everything outside of those core shapes and cleared it. So now we cleared up some of that messiness. And we're now moving into the new shadow layer. So this is going to be done in the same way where I'm going from the backmost layers to the frontmost layers, but I'm adding in some ambient inclusion from time to time, and then all or mostly, and then I'm also adding in some just reinforcing uh, shadows here or there. You'll see his face is this color right now, similar to how it was earlier, just so that I can see the separation of things. So if you aren't familiar with the rules um, and the actuality of ambient occlusion. Uh, the simplest way to explain it is just it's the part of the form where light is uh, least likely to be bounced into. So it's it's dark and it's usually very soft. Um, if you want to look at videos on ambient occlusion specifically, because I'm not going to be the person who's going to go into all the details of that, um, there's a dude named Marco Bucci who I'll actually link below. I don't do this very often, but I think that he's very informative. And uh, from his channel, you should be able to find a bunch of stuff on ambient occlusion and a bunch of other painting techniques as well. So now what I've done is I've laid in all that shadow and I'm doing my highlights. My highlights for this, because of the nature of his skin and the way that I wanted to capture the lighting, is all done with a blue, like turquoise layer, which you saw a second ago, full, pop in at full opacity, and then the opacity on that is lowered. What I'm doing is I'm putting in where the highlights are going to hit, and anywhere where there's shadow, I don't really care about, because when I'm done with this, I'm going to select my shadow layers and delete away all of the highlight layers. That way I am... Even even where the highlight might go right to the shadow, um, that way it's just deleted from there. So there you can see I've deleted away and I've also lowered the opacity on that uh, highlight layer um, down to where it feels right. Now we're getting a little bit of glow in his eyes. I didn't want his eyes to glow a crazy amount, um, but I wanted to get a little bit of darkening around the outer edge of them. And now here we're going to do 5 o'clock shadow. It's a dark layer as well as an additional white layer with noise applied to it. And then that noise will be set to multiply. And then I can adjust both of those to try and capture that look of 5 o'clock shadow. Add some extra darkening under his chin and under his ear just to really push the fact that those are dark areas. And then we've got some extra shine, which I'm using blue for because I'm making sure that my key light is blue. Now we darken the horns and also add a little bit of extra detailing where in the original line drawing I had some of those little notches and grooves in his horns. Um, so I'm just going in there and re-emphasizing those and adding a little bit of a highlight to them as well. And uh, now we're going to do a bunch of last minute little tweaks, adding some extra shine just to bring some uh, attention to little areas um, and emphasize the shape of little areas. Bring in some more local color stuff, trying to do like blush on Hellboy is a little hard, so I just sort of darken in like a little bit on his nose and his ears just to give some skin variation. Um, now we're doing some dirtying to his coat. Uh, with some sort of a texture brush that's already in Procreate, I don't remember which one, and then blurring it just a little bit and it's setting it to multiply so we can get that look. Now we do the cast shadow, which I just sort of threw in really quickly there. Um, that is a multiply layer that's like a gray, a darkish gray, um, maybe with a little bit of that warmth in there. Um, and you can see I just sort of threw it in there really quickly, and now I'm going in and adding the, uh, actually making it follow the geometry. Uh, adding a little bit of the subsurface scattering on his face as well there right where that that light hits as well as uh, some bloom there's a very very subtle bloom there now we're gonna add a little bit of bounce coming from the back but not too much because we don't want him to be too shiny and we and it's not a very bright environment in there you can also see I knocked back that horn a little bit and some of the back of his head just to bring him a little bit into his environment. This uh, piece did not actually get a color layer thrown on at the end. Everything is close to true color, but with the lighting being the right blue and the shadows being the right color, it's, it pulls it all together pretty, pretty well without having to do that, basically. I just add a little bit of that purple back glow just to give a little more color to the piece overall and a little more interest. Nothing, nothing much more beyond that, though. And there we go. That's the final Hellboy. I really like this piece. I'm, I'm very happy with the way it came out. It's one of the rare times where I'm super proud of it. Um, here is the line art. Uh, I'm going to go through the major stages so you can see that. Here's the line art laid over the flats so that you can see uh, how they line up. Here's the flats completely by themselves. Fairly strong silhouette, so I think it works quite well. This is the local color with the blush and the 5 o'clock shadow and all that kind of stuff. 
Here it is with the lighting layers turned on it so you can see the form. And then here it is with the cast shadow across it. So I really hope you guys dug this. It was tons of fun to do. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.